Fristam Pumps is a leading manufacturer of high-quality sanitary stainless steel pumps, blenders, and mixers. FPR Centrifugal Pump Seal Replacement. Before beginning, follow your company's lockout, tagout procedure. Reference the FPR maintenance manual online for additional safety precautions, tool sizes, torque values, and technical information. Tools required. Soft-faced hammer. 3 8 inch diameter rod. 24 mm socket with ratchet. Food grade lubricant. Denatured alcohol and a soft cloth. Torque wrench. FPR pumps do not require gapping if simply changing a seal. Removing the seal. To begin, remove the flange guard. Using a soft-faced hammer, remove the cover and discard the cover O-ring. Remove the impeller by placing a 3 8 inch rod in the shaft hole to lock the shaft. Use the socket with ratchet to remove the impeller nut. Discard the impeller nut gasket and remove the rod. Remove the impeller and discard the impeller O-ring. Remove the impeller key by compressing the seal spring. Remove the seal driver. Discard the seal spring and save the driver. Remove and discard the O-ring and rotating seal face. Remove the stationary seal by pushing from behind. Discard the stationary seal. For pumps with double seals, remove the flush seal and flush seal spring and discard. Everything but the seal driver is discarded. The seal driver is a non-wear part and is reused. Installing the new seal. When replacing a seal, use all of the components of the new seal kit and discard all old seal components. Failure to use Fristam genuine parts will void the pump warranty and can result in seal failure. Parts of a Fristam seal kit. Impeller nut gasket. Stationary seal. Stationary seal O-ring. Rotating seal. Rotating seal O-ring. Single seal spring. Outer seal driver O-ring. Inner seal driver O-ring. Additional rotating seal O-ring. Flush seal. Flush seal O-ring. Flush seal spring. When handling seals, avoid touching the new seal faces as much as possible. Use denatured alcohol and a soft cloth to clean the seal faces. Install the spring, ensuring that the spring sits entirely behind the shaft pins. The spring that has the white edge is the flush seal spring. Place the O-ring into the flush seal and lubricate. Push the seal onto the shaft, making sure the slots align with the pins. Install the stationary seal O-ring or O-rings onto the stationary seal and lubricate. Single seal pumps have one O-ring. Double seal pumps have two. Install the stationary seal into the housing, making sure to align the flats on the seal with the flats on the housing. Slide the inner seal driver O-ring onto the shaft and lubricate. Install the spring behind the seal pins inside the seal driver with the open ends down. Ensure the high points of the spring are not against the pins of the seal driver. Install the rotating seal O-ring and lubricate. Slide seal driver onto the rotating seal, making sure to align pins inside the driver with the slots on the seal. Confirm the seal springs back and forth to ensure pin and seal alignment. Slide the seal driver assembly onto the shaft. Install the impeller key and outer seal driver O-ring. Lubricate the O-ring. Slide the impeller onto the shaft, making sure to align keyway in the impeller with the key in the shaft. Lubricate the impeller nut gasket and place it onto the impeller nut. 
the raised face of the gasket will go into the groove on the impeller nut. Thread the impeller nut onto the shaft. Place the 3 8 inch rod in the shaft hole. Using a socket with the torque wrench, torque the nut to the foot-pound amount listed in your maintenance manual. Remove the rod. Using a feeler gauge, ensure the impeller gap is correct. Install the cover O-ring. Install the cover. Install the cover nuts and tighten with a soft-faced hammer. Rotate the shaft to check for rubbing. If any is detected, recheck your seal installation. Replace the flange guard. The pump is now ready to be placed back into service. Shaft change and gapping. To change the shaft, first remove the pump's cover, impeller, and seals as shown. Remove the seal water pipes. On pumps with a double mechanical seal or water cascade option, with the pliers, Loosen the housing clamping bolt with two wrenches until it is loose in the flange support. Note, the clamping bolt does not have to be removed. Now slide the pump housing off the end of the pump shaft. If the pump housing does not come off the flange support easily, widen the flange support by driving a screwdriver into the slot on top. Place the pump housing face down on the housing studs. Loosen the shaft collar screw on the shaft collar with the Allen wrench. Pull the pump shaft off the motor shaft. To install the new shaft, align the slot of the clamping ring directly over the slot on the shaft. Then slide the new shaft collar onto the pump shaft, but do not tighten the shaft collar screw at this time. Slide the pump shaft and collar shaft onto the motor shaft. Carefully slide the pump housing over the pump shaft and back against the flange support. The stationary seal may be damaged if it makes hard contact with the pump shaft. If the pump housing does not slide into the flange support easily, widen the flange support by driving a screwdriver into the slot on top. Slide the pump housing all the way into the flange support until the shoulder of the housing is against the flange support. Remove the screwdriver. If the pump has a double mechanical seal or water cascade option, Make sure that the water pipe holes in the pump housing are aligned with the holes in the flange support. While holding the pump housing against the flange support, tighten the clamping bolt in the flange support. Install the seal water pipes for double mechanical seals or water cascade option by threading them into the housing and tighten with the pliers. Reassemble the pump head as previously shown including all parts but the cover and flange guard. You are now ready to set the impeller gap. If you have removed the pump shaft from the motor shaft for any reason, such as replacing the shaft or motor, you must reset the gap. The gap is measured between the impeller and pump housing using feeler gauges. With the shaft collar still loose, push the shaft slightly forward to leave room to adjust the gap. Place the correct feeler gauge behind two blades of the impeller. Using a soft-faced hammer, tap on the front of the impeller nut until the impeller is snug against the feeler gauge. Tighten the shaft collar screw on the shaft collar to the proper torque. Remove the feeler gauge. Check the gap on each blade of the impeller to see if the gap on each blade is correct. Reinstall the cover and flange guard as previously shown. The pump is now ready to be placed back into service.